I'm sick of channel stealing reporters' work. Before we start, let's define plagiarism. Plagiarism, as defined by the University of Oxford, is presenting work or ideas from another source as your own, with or without consent of the original author, by incorporating it into your work without full acknowledgement. So you got that? Good. Now, Darren Gilliam, known online as Black Flags Matter, has been plagiarizing other journalists' works for years now. The sources for his videos are never linked in the description. However, race footage is almost always credited in the description. So why not link or at least cite where you got your information from? Well, I imagine if you had a link that was just essentially your transcript of your video coming from Wikipedia, that would not be a very professional look. But I'm getting ahead of myself, so let's take a step back to the beginning. In this first video, Black Fox Matter discusses Bubble Wallace and his Rise of the Cup series. Here, we can notice a trend with his videos and one of his habits he still partakes in to this day, reading racing reference stats. I'd play the footage if the video didn't have Fall Out Boy playing on full blast in the background, but racing reference is just a database for racing in case you didn't know, and reading the driver's seasonal stats and then showing a crash compilation is one of the ways Black Flags Matter extends the video's runtime. In just 14 starts, he scored two top fives and three top tens. When you compare it to his one top five and six top tens a season ago running all 35, you now see why he was viewed as a bright prospect. Who would he follow it up at Las Vegas? Crash and turn one and two. Into the wall. Kelly Byers in the 88 from Junior Motorsports. Okay. 32 car right around the corner here. Right around the corner. So upset about it, he's going to run up here and just drive into the door of the 21. Personally, don't have a problem with this content. I mean, it's a decent enough summary of a driver's career, even if it's fairly low effort. These kinds of videos, though, made up the majority of his early content. Series like NASCAR Bus, Bad Seasons, Good Seasons, and First Stars is what he built his channel on. However, where some of his plagiarism starts to seep through is in his 28th video, Gone Too Soon, Adam Petten. During a practice session at New Hampshire Motor Speedway, Petty throttle stuck wide open at turn three causing the car to hit the outside wall virtually head-on. Petty was killed instantly when he suffered a Bayser skull fracture. He was only 19 years old. When I say he's been copying and pasting from Wikipedia for years, I mean over half a decade at this point. I'm going to mainly focus on Black Flags Matters of docu-style video content. These videos frequently have the most plagiarism of any videos that he posts, and it's no surprise that when you find one plagiarized video, there are going to be dozens more. Fast forwarding to mid-February of this year, 2024, Black Flags Matter uploaded a video about Daytona USA 2. I had never heard about this sequel in my life, so I decided to check this video out. I thought it was interesting enough, so I went to Wikipedia to learn more. I then saw where the script of the video came from. So I made a call-out post on my Twitter.com, providing links to both. Black Flags Matter's newest video is literally just a copy and paste of Daytona USA 2's Wikipedia page. I'm not joking for yourself. Yeah, I put links for both. The post gained some traction, and drive through made a post that shows the direct copying and pasting and the occasional usage of a synonym. This post is linked at the top of the description if you want to check it out and just see how much plagiarism there truly was just from Wikipedia in this one video. I looked into his videos that were docu-style, and sure enough all of them had plagiarism from a variety of different sources, but Wikipedia was undoubtedly his favorite. Also, before anyone says you can't plagiarize from Wikipedia because it's open source, this quote is taken directly from their website. Quote, If you decide to quote or paraphrase Wikipedia text, then you must cite Wikipedia appropriately, otherwise you plagiarize, which is against academic norms and may subject you to censure. Such failure also violates Wikipedia's CC by SA copyright license, which is a violation of copyright law. For those who don't know, CC by SA is a license that allows people to, in this case, reword or adapt material so long as they cite their source. And despite how many times he's used Wikipedia as a source, Black Flags Matter has never once cited Wikipedia. And that's not even mentioning the other sites that he's stolen from, which don't allow their source to be directly copied from, even with credit. For example, LA Times, which was plagiarized in his video about Rick Ferrelli's basal skull fracture. After the collision, he tried to jerk his helmet off because he felt claustrophobic. He knew something was wrong. Once he got his helmet off, he grabbed his face and saw the blood. He was bleeding heavily from his ears. He LA Times on their website states, quote, Is permission required to use the Los Angeles Times content? Yes, 
permission must always be obtained when using Los Angeles Times content. Text, pages, graphics, photos, etc. Getting back on track here, after I made this callout post, people took it to the comments of the Days on USA 2 video, calling him out for being a Wikipedia audiobook. These comments were getting removed pretty much instantly, and one screenshot I got was this. Quote, Darian, you need to start actually putting work into your content. Just reading from websites isn't it. You can keep deleting comments all you want and not take accountability for your actions. It's only going to hurt you more. Please try to do better. You are only hurting your reputation by doing this. To which Black Flag's matter response, mods delete comments, LMAO. So instead of acknowledging that he had copied and pasted from Wikipedia, he chose to say that it wasn't his fault that the comments were being removed. Just completely disregarding the allegations right there. We'll see later on how this deflection of blame is a habit of his. Later into the day, he would respond to Advent screamer Michael Maroots, who said that he, Darren Gilliam was evil for stealing from Wikipedia and racing reference. Obviously a joke. Black Flags Matter would respond with, quote, that's what the streets are saying again. Crying emoji. About two hours later, he would double down again, saying he was taking his talents from Wikipedia to Oxford. This is a flippant joke dismissing my call-out post and any other accusation of plagiarism, so after getting more heat, he decided to post an apology 40 minutes later. Quote, took down the video from yesterday. I was lazy and wanted to get a video out there and led to a much sloppier product. I don't ever want to do that, you guys deserve a higher standard than that. My apologies. I'll be better. Because of the constant doubling down and overall egotistical approach, I decided to make another post showcasing his plagiarism from another video with highlights. I also made a transcript with all the plagiarism and almost all of the video is just a retelling of an article from Motorsport Memorial. A uh, link to that Google Doc is in the description if you want to check it out. It appears the pickup crew did not inform the race control that debris was found in turn two. Therefore, the information was not relayed to other marshals or to the other drivers and their spotters. Because of the 21 degree banking, Weaver had to almost crawl up the banking, making it difficult for incoming drivers to see him. Propoto was unaware of all of this and approached turn two at more than 100 miles per hour. As he drove into turn two, he spot Weaver in the middle of the track and immediately hit the brakes. The car fishtailed and the rear of the passenger side struck Weaver. He was flipped over the vehicle and was killed instantly. One fan who saw the whole thing from atop of his trailer had said, the guy was running one second, he took two steps on the track and it was over. This showcased how he had been doing this for ages and some of his most popular videos are just plagiarized from other sources. For reference, this video had a little over 100,000 views when I first posted it. However, he didn't take down the video like it did this Tony USA 2 video, likely because it was making the big bucks. Regardless, after my post about his plagiarism and his subsequent apology, I decided to let it go. I gave him the benefit of doubt and decided that he probably would have learned his lesson and improved. Yeah, you already know it's coming. After about a month of not watching any of Black Flags Matters videos, I decided to check out his newest video at the time and see if he was crediting his sources. The newest video at the time was Abandoned Tracks, Beverly Hills Speedway. The description had nothing, besides its social links and erasing footage. I decided to check if he was plagiarizing again, and shocker here, he was. It's also the first track in the United States to be designed with bank turns that incorporated an engineering solution known as spiral easement, or by some as track transition curve. Beverly Hills Speedway was multifunctional and was also used for the Beverly Hills Horse Show, the Flower Show, polo games, and other events that brought thousands to the city. And pretty soon, an increased demand for residential development in the area Area led them to selling off the race site in the fall of 1923 for two million dollars. Before I even made this video posting video evidence that they're saying his name explicitly, Black Flags Matter blocked me on Twitter. He then made a tweet that said, Reaching. Unfortunately, these tweets got deleted. I imagine doubling down for about the 50th time would be a great look. After his post, many people commented on his tweet promoting his video, telling him to stop plagiarizing. 
never directly replied to me or said the video is much sloppier than usual. Instead, he blocked any and all people who criticize him in the comments. He didn't backpedaled on this and unblocked everyone who had been criticizing him, but he didn't unblock me, which kinda hurt my feelings. Oh, and also you still have to lean comments after leaving snarky responses to him. So, after this, there's really nothing else to say. He uploaded it again about a week ago, and it was obviously plagiarized. It took the medical team 12 minutes to get him out of the car. He was transported to the hospital, where 45 minutes later, he had succumbed to his injuries. In his tweet promoting this video, he turned off comments. Truly a stellar look. So we're up to the present. And nothing has changed. Not acknowledging that this is a frequent problem is one thing, but not improving on it at all is just beyond a ridiculous choice. If you want to see more cases of plagiarism, Robert Burkett, or you slash I comment on crap on Reddit, has a video on YouTube showing 25 minutes of plagiarism, which is sadly really just scratching the surface. I wasn't really sure where to put this, but I feel like I should mention that Black Flags Matter it has received media credentials from NASCAR, but frequently acts unprofessional. I want to preface this by saying that he's likely improved since then, but this just goes to show his lack of accountability and professionalism. So here's a few cases. He jumped to conclusions about Truck Series driver Tanner Gray because of a racist iRacer who happened to share the same name as him. It obviously was not the same guy. He did actually apologize, but felt the need to point out that other people were doing it too. He's also spread misinformation about ARCA, a racing series that at the time had been recently purchased by NASCAR, and got called out by Charlie Crawl, the PR director of the ARCA. Once we got into the mid-2010s, ARCA found themselves struggling financially. The only solution was to get bought out by NASCAR, and they did in 2018. ARCA is a profitable company, and under no circumstance was ARCA sold to NASCAR because we were in some any sort of financial difficulty that's nothing could be further from the truth to, to just to see these people make the the assumptions because no one has ever asked me that question to, to go out here and make this assumption and put it on your youtube channel with tens of thousands of, of views it, it's irresponsible call call the you know if, if you want to make a claim call me i'm really easy to get a hold of really easy to get a hold of you call me Every day, Casey. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll talk to you. I, I I don't need to change your opinion. You can have whatever opinion you want, but if you have a factual question and you would like to to get the actual facts, call me. I'll take your call. I I don't care what your opinion is. I just want you to have the facts straight. And and to sit there and say Arca was in financial trouble, it's wrong. It's absolutely wrong, and it's it's irresponsible to say that in a public forum when you've never even asked us. Also, Charles responded by saying, hey, at Black Flag Matter, still waiting for you to call me. Zachary Tinkle, who is an ARCA driver, stated that Black Flag Matter's behavior in the garage was, quote, well known and posts misinformation and half-truths for clicks, which we just discussed. Black Flag Matter responded very professionally, calling Tinkle a goofy goober and industry backmarker. I believe that this response from Nathan Blastel is a great encapsulation of what's wrong with Black Flags Matter, and it's clear that the problem has only gotten worse since this tweet. Quote, Darian, I've had one conversation with you in person, and you are a super nice and chill dude. It seems like you have your heart in the right place, but you are destroying your reputation giving into this shit online. Your content is well done, you're a nice dude, but your Twitter is seriously out of control, man. And it's not because you posted something about Bowman fans, or because of, quote, opinions people don't agree with, quote. It's because of the way you carry yourself with your internet persona it just seems like you've made a complete mockery of independent media. What makes it worse is when people call you out on it, you just seem like you don't care, and it's gotten worse and worse over time, which just overall makes it seem like you don't care about the same community that embraced you. You were a popular content creator, dude. You were one of the faces of the community. But with that popularity comes responsibility. You represent a community of creators, and it really just seems like you don't care at all that your actions can reflect a community that goes farther than just you. Tough love or not from a quote-unquote ARCA backmarker or, or not, man, Zachary is not exactly wrong about how you're viewed at a garage. Good content, good conversations in person or not, 
this bullshit online will continue to hold you down, and although you might not see it firsthand, will continue to lose you respect. I'm sure you'll hit me back with some generic shit about how my drivers suck, or how you don't care, or that you don't know who I am, but I genuinely hope for your sake that some of this starts resonating with you. Because I do think you have a good heart, I do think your content is dope, but your actions affect more than just you. Being able to handle criticism is a huge part of becoming successful. Best of luck. So why does any of this matter? Well, as Nathan said, Darren Gilliam sets a bad example and hurts the reputation of all NASCAR YouTubers. He's associated with many of the top NASCAR YouTubers who have a responsibility to set the standard for everyone, including those smaller channels who are trying to get named for themselves in NASCAR. It's important to accept the criticism and improve, which it seems that he is incapable of. It's equally as important to hold him accountable as taking and plagiarizing the works from other journalists creates a negative ecosystem for motorsport journalism in general. Also, as we've seen, not properly doing your research can cause misinformation to spread. So Darian, if you're watching, just do better, man. Put the credits in the video or at least in the description like you do with your footage credits. It's not that difficult. I'm sick of channel stealing reporters' work. I'm not the one who said that. Guess who it was?